Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this problem, they give us a velocity versus time graph as the blood is going through the ascending aorta. And they want us to know in part A how far in centimeters it moves during one beat. So this is the one beat right here. And then for part B, they say if we assume that there's similar data for you as your ascending aorta, they want us to make a rough estimate of how far that is and how many beats it would take to go from your heart to your brain. So the displacement for delta y is going to be the area under the curve. And under this triangle here, we have 1 half times the base times the height. So if we plug in the numbers for that, we have the base is 0.2 seconds. So 1 half times 0 0.2 seconds. And then the height is point, let's say 0.75, it's about halfway between 0.5 and 1. So 0 0.75 meters per second. So we have 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.75. And that gives us 0 0.075. So 0 0.075, and what is that? The seconds cancel, so we are in meters but they want it in centimeters. So if we move the decimal place over two for 100, that is 7.5 centimeters for how far it moves up the ascending aorta in one beat. So that was part A. Now for part B, they want us to figure out how many beats it takes to go to your brain. We have to make an assumption here, and I don't ever like it whenever they make us make an assumption, because then of course we all could get potentially different answers. And um, the book estimates that it's about 30 centimeters from your heart to your brain. So we're going to be using that. So velocity is going to be the change in the distance, which in this case is delta y over the change in time, which is delta t, of course. So if we rearrange for delta t, we multiply both sides by t. That goes away. And let's come over here. And so now we have delta y is equal to velocity times the change in time. And now we isolate t by dividing both sides by velocity. And now we have delta t is equal to delta y divided by the velocity. Now, if you notice from the original equation to what we have here, we essentially just swapped places with the velocity and the time. I like to show all of the steps so that there's no confusion. And it's good practice to do that just so you don't get, um, just so you don't get confused and make a mistake, especially on the test. So now that we have our final equation here, let's plug in the values. So we have change in the distance is 30 centimeters. And the velocity that we just found is 7.5 centimeters per one beat. And so now whenever we're dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So when we do that, the centimeters will both cancel out and we're left with beats. So we have 30 divided by 7.5, and that gives us four. So it takes us four beats to go from our heart up to our brain.